Uh, Connor Barwin has said he expects Bradford to be back in a week or two. And I'll get John's take on that. He has a piece up at 97.3 ESPN.com. John, do you think that Bradford is starting to realize the doors are shut in his face and he's got nowhere to go? Uh, What do you make of Barwin's comments today? Well, Connor's actually talked to him, so he's one of the few people that has. Also, Jordan Matthews, and uh, from Connor's perspective, he thinks he's going to be back, as he said, in a week or two. Uh, I I was checking the calendar today. May 17th is the start of of the voluntary process, again, where the veterans have to to report for voluntary work. Uh, The rookie camp's May 13th to 15th. He doesn't have to show for that, but uh, and then you have media uh, availability on the 17th, the 24th, and the 31st. So if I look at it logically, I don't think he's going to be there on the 17th for the first day, but I do think he's going to be there sometime that week and sort of prepare for the 24th because you're going to have the scrum when he comes back. But if he wants to be the starting quarterback of this team, Everyone's focused on June 7th. He's got to be there before then because this is a new offense with a new coach, and if he's going to be the leader in 2016, he's got to be back, and that's sort of what Connor Barwin intimated today. Yeah, and uh, the quote from Barwin was, I think all of us see Sam as the starter for the next year or two to help mentor, but Carson will be the quarterback of the future, Barwin admitted. That is kind of why Bradford's in this situation because he knows – the sand is running through the hourglass for him as well, John. Do you think that Bradford can do anything to win back the fans, win back um, – I, I don't want to say his teammates because I think his teammates are supportive of him in some capacity, but he's got a tarnished image right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think it's all that tarnished with, with his teammates – uh, one of the things I disagreed with was the fact when Tom Condon kind of said that uh, he couldn't walk in that locker room and lead. Uh, teammates understand contract issues, and if you're not happy, and, and generally uh, it's sort of like the NFL brethren. They, they stick with each other and, and say, do what you have to do, and, and we'll have your back. So I, I don't think that's a part of it. But, yeah, from a fan's perspective, they're not going to turn around on Sam Bradford unless he does one thing, and that's win a lot of football games. So if he somehow comes in and starts week one and this is a 10- or 11-win team and makes the playoffs, I think he'll win over the fan base. But if he performs poorly uh, and this team, say, 3-5, and 3-6, and six, it's only going to keep getting worse and worse and worse because he hasn't come across very – well at all toward the fan base. No. uh, So we could insinuate on opening day when they play the Cleveland Browns that the PA announcer is addressing and announcing the starting defense, not the offense? (laughs) It would be a good (laughs) idea. If the Eagles are listening, uh, and they should be, yeah, that's, that's a very good idea because, hey, you know what? The defense has always been uh, the pride of this town anyway, sort of like the personality, and I think they're going to be very, very excited with that side of the football just because uh, there wasn't a lot of attention paid to it with Chip Kelly uh, here. Now all of a sudden you have Jim Swartz. It's going to be completely different. That's obviously on paper the strength of the team. So, yeah, I would, I would very much lean towards defense on opening day. Uh, John McMullen, 97.3 ESPN.com. He's got more on what Connor Barwin had to say about the Sam Bradford saga, which, again, John, we've talked about it a lot, but it's been unprecedented. We've never seen a story like this in the NFL where the guy signs a contract and then uh, a month later he wants out. Yeah, you sign and you hold out. (laughs) Right. I mean, it's unprecedented. We gave T.O. a tough time. We gave T.O. a tough time because he signed and one year later – wanted to redo yeah. the deal. This is one month later. He doesn't want to redo it. He wants to get out of it. Yeah. And remember, T.O. also performed at a tremendously high level. So he signed under market value from a from a money standpoint. It was actually kind of understandable why he, he wanted to hold out. Uh, but he did it so unprofessionally. I, I think a lot of people turned on him for that aspect of it. And in Sam's case, Similar. He signed a, 
a, a pretty, you know, market value deal uh, and, and got for his perception in the league that we kind of talked about yesterday. Uh, and, and the change has been directly toward the fact that the Eagles have, have drafted his ultimate successor. But, you know, Steve Wisniewski could say the same thing, really, if you think about it. Uh, he, he signed to come in and start at left guard. Uh, and all of a sudden, the Eagles oh, I think that's different. Isaac, said, well, in, in a way, it is. It. I mean, obviously, profile wise, it, it's not. Uh, it, it's excuse me, it is different as far as the high profile nature of it. But it's really not that different as far. I, as... I get your premise, but Isaac Sayamola, say uh, Malo, excuse me, as I open up uh, the Eagles uh, email God here. God bless you, Isaac Sayamalo is drafted in the third round. They didn't give up anything to get him. There's no pressure for the organization to have to play Sayamalo. No, no, but they've drafted his successor. And and really, it's just a, a stage. The stage is much bigger, number one, at the quarterback position, uh, number two, with the number uh, two selection in the draft. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, uh, you're going to go move forward with it, just like, uh, well, the L.A. Rams, you know, if, if you go, okay, here's a better one. If you go back to earlier this this off season, Mike, Jeff Fishers was on the record numerous times saying Case Keenan was the starting quarterback. Case Keenan was my starting quarterback. All of a sudden, you get to the draft. Now, we all know Jeff Fishers is blowing smoke, but he, 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 he drafts his successor. And obviously, as the number one overall pick, Jared Goff is the future of the Los Angeles Rams. Mm-hmm. But you know what? Case Keenum's got to show up to work. Yes. Did Case Keenum sign a new deal this offseason? No, he didn't. He didn't have to but, make a choice. So he didn't have a choice whether he could have decided whether he wanted to stay under these conditions or not. He was already here. No, yeah, and, and nothing's going to be a perfect comparison. Right. But well, again, it goes back is, to the unprecedented nature of this whole situation. Yeah. And the only, I'll, I'll say I never criticize an NFL player because contracts in the NFL, basically all of them, are year to year. Even with the with the high guarantees, if, if you want to move on from a player, from an organizational standpoint in the NFL, it's not all that difficult. And it, it, it's a very organization slanted system, uh, and there's many reasons for that. Uh, number one, because of the number of players versus say basketball or baseball or other sports uh, and because of the injury risk uh, because you can't be playing guys for 10 years that can't play for nine of them that just would the whole financial structure of the the sport would fall apart so I never criticize players for getting everything they can uh, complaining about contracts holding out things of that nature but from a money perspective Sam got what he wanted, so really this is just a, a perspective of, of a competitive environment and an opportunity. He feels like he doesn't have it, and yep. to be truthful, he's right. He's 100% <laughs> right. No, there's no doubt However, about it. He's, as I pointed out many times to you, Mike, he's hardly the first player in this position, and you've got to be a professional, and you've got to think about your next spot. Yeah, I agree with all get... of that. I agree with all of that. The, 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 the one crux that I keep getting held up on is – would he have signed here had he known what was about to happen? That's all. If he knew it and signed, then I then he has no leg to stand on. But if he was massaged into signing that deal because they had no better option, and at thirteen they weren't going to they were not taking a quarterback at thirteen, in my opinion, and they that's why they signed Sam because they knew they didn't have another option. And if that's the case, then I do feel he was kind of misled. Well, I, I think it comes down to, to his mental uh, aspect of this and the psychology of it from his perspective. And eventually we'll get to ask him that question. I think he knew the Eagles were going to get a, a quarterback in this draft, but he thought and it would and be I don't more disagree of with, a, I don't disagree with that either, so I agree with you there. Yeah, he thought it would be more of a, at, at worst-case scenario for him, a Paxton Lynch type, best-case scenario – a Christian Hackenberg, Dak Prescott, Kevin Hogan type. And in his mind, 
that would have been better for him, and it certainly would have been. He would have had an opportunity if he continued to play well. There's no real uh, need to push for, say, Christian Hackenberg, for sake of argument, to get on the football field. Uh, whereas if you take somebody at number two overall, you know, he's, he's going to play. That's just the reality of the system. Yeah. And I, I understand Sam's frustration from that perspective. It's he's not handling it well. No, he's not handling it well. It's perfectly understandable from a, a, a human element, a human perspective. Uh, it's certainly uh, I, anybody would be upset in that circumstance, but most veteran quarterbacks that have been in this exact circumstance have handled it better than Sam Bradford. No doubt. And, again, I feel like people react with, well, what has he ever done? He's made all this money. I think that needs to be taken out of it and just whether or not the guy was misled or lied to. It doesn't matter if he's good, bad, the worst player in the league. Was he told one thing and then something else, the rug got pulled out from under him? Uh, I do no, want to – I mean, nobody forced Sam Bradford to pay $78 million. He's deserving of every cent. That's just what I said about the NFL – and the nature of it. Nobody's going to turn down the money they're offered, uh, so I don't begrudge Sam for the money he's made or the money he's going to make this year. Uh, but there is some aspect to the public relations. You have to understand, and if he doesn't understand, Tom Condon has to let him in on it. The fact is, when you are a high-profile athlete and you do make a lot of money, well, yeah, then the general public is probably going to get a little bit upset. Yeah. If you if you play it this way, and that's part of it that he should understand. John, uh, Eagles agree to terms with two more draft picks. They only have Carson Wentz left. We talked about Isaac Seumalo. The other is uh, Halapule Vatai Vitai. Aha, Big V. Yes. I'm just going Big V. Big V. Uh, give me your thoughts on what their roles could be this year. Do they have legitimate uh, opportunities uh, to start on that offensive line? I think Sayamalu does. Uh, I think he's going to be given every opportunity to win that left guard spot. I think, you know, any time uh, a coaching staff and a personnel department uh, is uh, taking draft picks in, in the priority rounds, first, second, third, uh, they want them to succeed, and they're going to be given every opportunity to succeed, and that's a position the Eagles struggled at mightily last year, left guard. What's that left guard uh, spot? Is it Barbary, Wisniewski, uh, Sayumalo? Is that like a, a the three-man battle for that spot? Yeah, and right now it seems, by the way, they've been talking that Wisniewski it was brought in to start and be sort of the stopgap. Uh, and Alan Barber would would have a chance to compete uh, as the starter from last year, but he didn't perform all that well. And then things shifted a little bit when Sam Malu got drafted in the third round. Uh, He's got a lot of versatility. He can play any of the interior positions, so uh, they like that about him. But I I do think they want to see him push with uh, with Wisniewski for the the starting job. It remains to be seen if he can do that, because that's a guy – uh, with a lot of experience, obviously he, he most of it's at center, uh, but he has played guard in the past when he's with the Raiders. Uh, so it, it's going to be difficult for him. Uh, but as I said, anytime you take a guy in those priority rounds, you want him to succeed. So he's going to get every opportunity to, to to push for that spot. All right. For more on the Eagles, um, I won't even say the Sam Bradford stuff because you can all know you all know that that's all at ninety seven three ESPN dot com. There is plenty to dive into uh, on that over there on the two new signees. All that's left is Carson Wentz, and uh, you know one thing that's interesting about the Philip Rivers Drew Brees comparison. People forget John Brees uh, Rivers, excuse me, held out which really, not that he was going to win that job or take Breeze off the field, but he held out, so he was way behind the eight ball when that season started. So there was a small chance that he was going to get on the field anyway, but Breeze had an unbelievable year when Rivers was a rookie, and then the second year, Breeze played well. He didn't play pro uh, all pro, but he was pretty good, but then he got hurt, and that made that yeah, decision remember, a lot easier. There's a second aspect of it. Remember, that's the old collecting bargaining agreement. When you when you would take a quarterback in the top five, you would have to pay out the nose. So it was even more. As Sam Bradford was the last so-called 
uh, big bonus baby under the old CBA at the quarterback position. That's why he got paid all the money he did in St. Louis. Now, uh, the new system is much more advantageous from a salary cap perspective. So what you want to do is hit on a young quarterback, and then you have him for five years, generally at a very low cost. Even a guy like Wentz at number two overall, when you compare it to the rest of the league, uh, and that enables you to build your roster on the back end better. So if you are lucky enough to hit on a young quarterback, uh, you have a chance to be very, very good in this league for a number of years because it helps you so much for building a roster. Yeah, now, a la Seattle. Exactly. And now with Wentz, obviously, and, and Russell Wilson, you don't get all five of those years because if they play that well, you generally have to redo the deal in year four. Uh, but still, it, it's it's what everyone is looking for. It's what everyone in this league is desirous of, and they want to hit on a young quarterback because it's it means so much to put together a really, really strong roster. Uh, at J.F. McMullen, follow him on Twitter, and uh, we'll talk to him on Monday with more NFL news and notes. Uh, the Eagles open up their camp on the 17th of May. We'll find out if Sam Bradford is there or not. Thanks, John. Hey, thanks, Mike.